Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can quickly relink and update our 2D drawings inside SOLIDWORKS using the Bracket Exercise Case Study as reference. Now, in this example, I'm going to assume that you just finished up your 2D drawing for the Bracket Exercise P1, and it should look something like this document right here. So in the bottom right-hand corner, instead of our title block, we see Bracket Exercise P1, and then we have a series of views for the part or the 3D model, and then we have our dimensions, our GD&T callouts and control frames, and then up here in the top right-hand corner, we have our revisions table, and we are currently at revision A, and we can see that the part has been released for production. Now, we saw inside SOLIDWORKS simulation and our FEA studies that this part had to go through a series of revisions, going from P1 to P2, and then P2 to P3. And this is because the part was not strong enough to withhold the intended load ratings without breaking until we eventually got to that P3 model. So in that example, we didn't actually save over the file every single time going from P1 to P2 and then P2 to P3. We actually did a save as and created three separate models. And this will effectively allow us to maintain an active history where we're not saving over the file and losing the progress we made from P1 to P2 and then P2 to P3. So you can see that history in real time. However, it would probably be better to save over this file if you are working inside of a PDM vault and you could actually maintain your revisions and maintain your history inside of that server. But in this example, we are not using a PDM vault, so that's why I created three separate files and you could see the active history going between each revision. So in this example, we are trying to go from the P1 drawing, which is what you see here, and then we're going to go and try to make this P2 drawing from the new 3D model that we created for P2. So I already completed this P2 drawing, but I'm going to show you this as reference. This is where we're trying to get to after we finish this exercise here. But we can see that the model has been updated. We added those ribs. We still have all of our views. We still have all of our dimensions, the GDNT callouts and control frames. And then up here in the top right hand corner, we have our revisions table and we've moved from revision A to revision B. You can see clearly that we've added ribs for strength per testing and then we have a B callout right down there. Now there's a couple ways that we can go about creating this new drawing for the bracket exercise P2. Obviously, we can start over from scratch where we start a new template. We bring in the 3D model of the bracket exercise P2. However, we would then have to bring in all of our views, reestablish all of our dimensions, the GDNT symbols, the control frames, revision table, title block, so on and so forth. To me, that just seems like a lot of double work and especially triple work if we're going from P1 to P2 and then P2 to P3. I think since we already completed this P1 drawing, we can just use that as reference and follow a similar workflow when we were going through the revisions in the 3D model and then just do a save as and then see if we can restitch or replace the model that we're using for that drawing. So I want to take the P1 drawing and then replace the model that's being used in the views with the new or updated P2 drawing. Additionally, I'm going to take this example one step further and pretend maybe we emailed ourselves this file or that we had to download it from a Google Drive or a Dropbox or maybe even we're pulling it from a PDM server and we're not the original author. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and minimize these drawings right here and I'm going to open up that drawing as if I downloaded it here and we can see the bracket exercise P1. So I'm just going to double click on this so that I can open up in SOLIDWORKS and oops, I get this warning. It says, hey, I'm missing the original file. Where is that located? So it's giving me an option to browse, suppress this component or suppress all missing components. And then by the time that I read that warning message, it disappears and then I see a drawing that looks like this where I have missing references and there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm actually going to close out of this drawing here really quick and I'm going to then not save it and then reopen it. It's a little bit frustrating but you have to make sure that you have the original model that's linked to that drawing and if you're pulling this or opening it on a new computer it doesn't recognize the original paths that were set up previously. So again if you're downloading it from an email or a Dropbox or from a server you're actually going to have to relocate this uh, by clicking browse for file. So click on this browse for file option here and then we're going to have to look for that model for the bracket exercise P1. So I have this bracket exercise P1 model right there. I'll click on that. And then you're going to want to select the open option from the bottom right hand corner. So once we click open, this is going to effectively allow us to relink or reattach that 3D model for the bracket exercise P1 into the 2D drawing that was previously missing that link. So once it reloads and opens up here, we can see that there are no longer any issues. The views have been reconstructed. We are not missing any of our dimensions or GD&T symbols. So to me, this looks pretty good. So as long as you save this, so we're going to go to file, save, and you save over that bracket exercise P1, that will then reestablish that link here locally on this computer. 
So now that we've fixed this reference file, how are we going to reattach this or make a new copy for the bracket exercise P2 without having to start over from scratch? So this should be relatively easy. We're actually just going to move over here to the top left hand corner into the command manager ribbon and we're going to click on the drawing tab right here. So click on drawing. This is going to be where all of your views are located. And just like what we would do if we wanted to create a new view or we wanted to create a new cross section, we're actually just going to move up into here and we're going to look for replace model. So it's this icon. It's the last one to the right on that row here. We're going to click on replace model. And right now this is going to ask us on the left hand side in the properties manager, what model or view do we want to replace? So right now it already has drawing view one selected. We could reselect this or deselect this. So if I click on it again, it deselected it from the selected views, but I'll click on it once again to repopulate the selected views. You want to at least see one view there for the drawing view. And then likewise, you want to make sure that you have all views toggled on. So click on all views, and this will then uh, correlate to the entire blueprint. Whatever views are currently on it, it will replace the model that you are using with whatever you're going to select. So now we're going to replace it with a new model. So it's asking us for a part or an assembly. And I'm just going to click on this browse option right here. So click on browse. And then I'm just going to go back to the uh, folder that I have all of my 3D models from P1 to P2 to P3. So I have all of my 3D models right here. And then I'm going to then reassociate this to the bracket exercise P2 model right there. I'll click on that. And then we'll move down here to the bottom right hand corner. And then we'll click on the open button. And then once it actually reestablishes that link to the new model that we want to replace, so the bracket exercise P2, it's going to give us this green uh, notification over here. And then we're just going to hit the green check mark to allow that change to proceed. So we'll hit the green check mark from the top left hand corner in the properties manager. And just like that, we were able to replace the model from bracket exercise P1 to bracket exercise P2. And as an added bonus, it looks like we got extremely lucky using the replace model feature going from P1 to P2 because I'm looking throughout my 2D blueprint here and I'm not really seeing any yellow or gold dimensions or geometry, which would let me know that I have a broken relationship going from one model to the other. And this often happens when you replace an edge with a fillet or you add a chamfer or maybe you're adding another extrusion or you're cutting material away. And effectively going from one model to the other, uh, the dimension here is trying to reference this specific edge, but it no longer exists because it's been replaced with a new piece of geometry. So you would often see that the dimension has changed to gold or that yellow color, which is letting you know that is a broken relationship. However, again, I'm not really seeing anything out here, but I'm going to show you an example. If you do have a broken relationship, you can always click on that dimension and there's going to be a point at the end of the leader arrow. And if you click, hold and drag on that, you can pull it off of that edge and then pull it back onto that edge to try to re-snap or reassociate that dimension to that edge. However, if that doesn't work, in some rare cases, you actually have to delete this dimension. So you click on it, highlight it, and then click delete, uh, delete on your keyboard to remove it. And then you'd have to smart dimension it and then reassociate that geometry. However, again, I'm not really seeing any of those broken pieces of geometry or those dimensions. So I'm actually going to undo that by hitting control Z to bring back that dimension. And then I would just process this revision as normal. So I would probably start off by making a save as copy so that I'm not overriding my existing bracket exercise P1 drawing. So up here in the top left hand corner, I would go to file. And then from the drop down menu, I would go to save as. And then inside of my 2D drawing folder, I'll just name this bracket exercise. And instead of P1, I'm going to change this to P2, hit enter. And now I have a new working copy for that bracket exercise P2 drawing. So I can start making updates or changes. I would probably start off by actually updating my revision table. Table. So down here in the bottom left hand corner, we just want to make sure that we're on the correct level or layer. So I'm going to change the layer here. And then uh, from this change layer document, I'm actually going to hit this drop down menu because I can currently see I'm still on the sheet dimensions. And then I'm going to change this here to my revision table. So as long as we're on the revision table layer, I'm going to come back up here to my revisions table. And then I'm going to hit this little B when I hover over the revision table to add a new revision. So I'm going to click on this little uh, icon right there. And then this is going to prompt a new revision. And then with the leader that is attached to my mouse, I'm going to create a call out here in the center of these two 
uh, ribs. So I'll go right down here to the midpoint of this line, and then I'll establish a call out like so. I might have to zoom in just a little bit, and I'll place that right there. But it looks like this is populating to C, and I really want this to be updated to B, so I'm going to hit Escape once on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, and then I'm going to update this revision uh, level here up in the revision table. I'll double click on the C, and then I'll change this here to B. And that should also update down there in the callout as well when I hit the enter key. And then for the revision here, I'm just going to double click in the description and I'll just say added ribs per strength testing. And then I'll also revise this here with my initials. And then sometimes when you create a new revision in the revision table, it actually steps up your revision table and then pulls it out of the uh, borders of your drawing. And all you need to do is hover over the revision table and there should be a little cross up in the top left-hand corner. Click, hold, and drag on that and you can re-snap that into the right-hand corner up here at the top. Next, I would update my title block. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And again, I can't double click on the bracket exercise title block right here. So no matter what I do, I can't access it because it's on the back end level of the entire drawing. So I'll have to right click in the free space somewhere. So I'll right click. And from this drop down menu, I'm going to select edit sheet. So I have to find edit sheet format located right here from the drop down menu. So I'll click edit sheet format. This is going to bring me into the back end of my drawing. And now I can update my bracket exercise P1. So I'll just double click on this text box. And even though I'm on a different level or different layer, this original bracket exercise uh, text was associated to its own layer. So I'm already using that. So I'm just gonna change this P1 to P2. It's not going to update that to the revision table layer that we're currently on. And then I'll just back out here. I'll also have to change the part number from 98451 to 98452. And then I'll move back out here into the white space. I will right click and then from the drop down menu, I wanna return back to the sheet. So I have to click edit sheet and that's going to bring me back to the drawing. Now, the last thing that we want to do before we complete this bracket exercise P2 blueprint is we just want to make sure that we include some center lines with these ribs so that people know what angle they're located at. So right now we're currently on the revisions table level. So we just want to update that to these uh, dimensions level. So in the bottom left hand corner, we're going to click change layer. And again, we're currently on that revision table. So let's hit the drop down menu and we're just going to change this here to sheet dimensions. So instead of just drawing some lines and toggling them to be construction, I think an easy way to do this is actually just to go over here to sketches, and then we're going to use the offset command. So we're gonna locate offset entities right here. So click on offset entities. And then we already know that the typical wall thickness is 0.125. So you could then take 0.125 and then divide that by two, which would give you the center line of each one of these ribs. So I'll just click on one side of the rib. So I'll click right here. And right now that um, uh, offset is projecting to the left side, I'm going to click reverse and that should go to the opposite side and that should place it right down the middle of that rib. Again, it's 62 thousandths. We'll hit the green check mark and we have that blue uh, line right there. And I'm just going to move this dimension over here and then I'll click on this line and then I'm just going to click hold and drag on the point, bring it all the way down to this surface. And then again, I'll click hold and drag on this point, bring it to this surface. And then you could move this uh, text. And sometimes this might be a little bit too big. So you could actually click on this text and then over here on the left hand side inside the uh, properties manager you just want to actually change from the value tab and go all the way over here to the right into other and inside of other you can actually overwrite this by clicking or deselecting use document font so i'm going to deselect that then i'll click on this font option right now and this is currently giving me a unit height of 0.125 and let's maybe say that we want to go half of that or maybe a little bit smaller so you can say 0.0625 and then you can update that value and even that looks a little bit too small so i'm going to change this over here to actually 0.09375 and that actually looks a little bit better now before i forget i do want to toggle this line over to a construction line so click on this line here and then over here on the left hand side in the properties manager for that line you just want to make sure that you toggle this for construction so we want to see that dotted line and then we have that dimension calling out right there so that looks really good to me and that fits inside of the uh, the view and we'll just do the exact same thing on the right hand side here so I'm just gonna go ahead and go and click on the offset entities and then I'm going to then click on this line here again it already is currently set to 0 0.0625 which is what we were using before so I'm gonna click on this edge right there and it's going here to the right 
right, and then we'll hit the green check mark, and then this is giving me that value. And like we were doing before, same workflow, I'm gonna click on the end point of this line and snap it to this arc. We'll click on the end point of this line, and then we'll snap it, snap it down here to the uh, midpoint of that. And then again, I'm just going to click on this uh, dimension here for the 0 0.063. Go over here to the left-hand side, we're gonna change from the value tab over to the other tab. And then inside of other, you're going to deselect use document font. We're going to then select font. And then inside of font here again, we're gonna change this to a value of 0 0.125 to 0 0.09375, and then hit the green check mark. And then we'll just pull that into here. And then to finish this off, we'll just have to click on this line. And then we're gonna go over here to the left-hand side, change this for, for construction. And then the last thing to tie this all together, we're just gonna go ahead and click on smart dimensions. And then we'll click on this line, and then this line, and then that's gonna give me my 60 degrees. We'll hit the green check mark and then we'll reverse that and you'll have your 60 degrees right there. I'll also even these out, balance them a little bit, but that should in theory complete your revision management here going from P1 to P2. Um, for me right now, I'm not super happy where it says like 60.00, so I'm just going to overwrite this value and just make it 60 degrees or even change here from uh, two decimal places to no decimal places and then I'll just make that 60 degrees. So that should complete this uh, bracket exercise P2 drawing revision going from P1 to P2. You can see that we made pretty quick work of this. We didn't have to start over from scratch. We were able to reference that existing P1 model, use that replace uh, model uh, feature, which is located here inside the drawing tab, so using replace model. And then we were able to bring in that P2 model and then reassociate all this geometry. In our case, we got extremely lucky. We didn't have any broken uh, dimensions or geometry that we had to update. And we only had to change maybe one detail up here in the revision table, add that uh, call out. We had to create some center lines and then add a couple dimensions. And that really just finished it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is complete. We finished up the uh, update going from P1 to P2. Just make sure that you save your file. And then there's a good uh, practice here. Just make sure that you know how to save out as a PDF. So we're gonna hit file. And then you're gonna go to save as. And then always again, save your file. But you can always come down here to save as type. Hit the drop down menu. And then you can create a PDF. So you're gonna create an Adobe PDF. And then we'll go ahead and, um, I could save over my old blueprints, but I wanna keep those as my masters. And then likewise, we can also save this as, and we can hit the drop down menu here and create a DXF or a DWG. So if I made a DXF here and I save that out and I hit save, and this is going to create a uh, DXF for me, we'll export everything, that looks great. I'm gonna just reopen this here really quickly. I'm gonna go into my bracket exercise, go inside of my, uh, 2D drawings, and you can see here, this is the importance of us uh, separating our levels, just to kind of reiterate a point that we've talked about before. But when you have everything separated by levels here, you can actually go inside of these um, DXF drawing viewers or e-drawing viewers, and then go into the layers, and then you can turn off certain details for details that you don't need. So for example, all those cheat dimensions, if you just wanted to see what the uh, part looked like, you can get rid of all that extra noise. So there's a lot of value, again, in creating these DXFs, using it for quoting purposes, being able to um, export them out, and then use them for legacy transfers if you're trying to send them via email as well. So again, I hope that this was helpful for you. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll Go ahead and catch you in the next one. Bye.